Sports activity for the uh, for the fall loop, where we're essentially going to be working on some burn damage, poison damage, or whatever it is that you want to work on here. Now, let me show you what we're going to be working on. So I'm just going to play here, and then we're going to build it up together. So what we have here is we have a nice little campfire that is on fire. So I run on this. And then as you can see, my health is continuing to lower for around three seconds once I have touched this. And that is because of our full loop, which is counting from one to three, essentially. So uh, what we're gonna do first of all is <clears throat> we are gonna get the styling. So we're gonna make this, uh, well, we're just gonna make the, the fire first of all. So we're gonna need a part it over here. Uh, let's make sure it's anchored and then let me add a particle emitter. So the particle emitter, what this does is this, oh, I'll just show you, it's responsible for essentially shooting out particles. So particle emitter. Now that's what it looks like when you first pop it in there, but obviously we want to change a few things. So click on your particle emitter and First thing we're going to do is let's change the color. So I don't want white. I am going to have a dark orange that'll do. Next thing is I don't want the particles shooting up in the sky. I want to keep them sort of attached to the part itself. So to do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down to speed here. Now in the particle emitter, the speed essentially works as how quick are they coming out? So if you turn this up, they shoot out faster. But if you go to right down to zero, they don't fly essentially. They just collect here, which would then give us the campfire look. Now, uh, the other thing is right now, this does not look like a fire that much. Uh, it looks kind of cool, but there's other ways we can do this. So what I'd now like you to do is go back up to texture here and click on this. And this is essentially what your particles look like. Now we're going to change something here right at the end where it says sparkles, just before the underscore, delete sparkles there up to the slash. And what I'd now like you to do is to write in fire like that. And then this is what we have. Now this is look not looking that great right now. So what we're going to do is let's make the part not the particle emitter, let's turn the transparency to one, just so we can't see the part and we can only see the fire. Uh, yeah, that'll do. Now, uh, what we're gonna do here is now we are gonna add our script to this part. So the part, let's add a script and let's build out the burn damage. Now, the vast majority of this you have already done. So the first thing that we need to do is check if it's humanoid. Please pause the video, please add that, and then come back to uh, and then come back to us. So if you've had a go at that, if you've installed the finding out if it's humanoid or not, let's now add this together. So we want local, and I'm going to call this campfire. Um, and if I can spell, there we go. Uh, script dot parents. Then we want to say our function, so local function, and then I'm going to call this one burn, or burning. Add the brackets, and now let's connect them together. So we have campfire, then the action dot touched, and then we're saying please computer connect it to my burning function here. Now, once we touch it, we need to check what is touching it. So we are gonna create a parameter for this. Uh, so we're gonna call this other part because we need to check what this is. We don't know what it is just yet. Then we're gonna create a variable to gather the parent information because if your character is touching it, it's probably just gonna be an arm or a leg. Nothing we can do with that. The health lives somewhere else. So we need to grab all the information here. So we're gonna say character. Uh, equals other parts dot parent, and then we want to find the humanoid. So we've done this a few times now, but humanoid equals character, and then we're looking for 
Now we're going to use that really long sentence of a function. Find first child which is is a uh, and then humanoid. Let's have a look. Find first child which is a uh, yep bro. And then we would just want to add the if statement to see if there's anything inside humanoid. Because if there's nothing inside there, then it's not a character that's touching it. Brilliant. Now, your next challenge to do, uh, once you've built this out, is have a look at the debouncing, the slow burning lava projects, the one where it's the bright blue bridge that slowly damaged us as we're going across. Or have a look at the size increase. What we need to do here is we need to make sure that our the fire damage doesn't stack on top of each other. So we need a way of activating and deactivating the fire uh, for at least for a few seconds, just so we only get like what one bit of damage. If it stacks, then your character will die. <laughs> and that's not gonna be very good for the gameplay. So pause the video now, go back to those videos, uh, have a look and then have a go at it yourself. The clue is here. You'll need to create a variable and you'll need called active and you'll need to set this to true that is your big clue now pause the video come back in a few sec well, pause the video have a go and then we'll go through it together so if you are back uh, what we have now have to do is there's two ways that you can do this you can add another if statement inside here so you can say if active is equal to true then we want to do something or if you want to do it on one line, then you would go to your if statement here, and then you would use the and keyword. It's entirely up to you how you do this. So active equals true, then we want to do something. Now the first thing that we want to do is we just want to set our active to false to stop this from hurting anybody. So active uh, equals false. And then before we do anything else, just before we forget, we're gonna set active equals true, like that. Always uh, build your programs with what you know. So the first thing that we were doing was we were checking if it was a humanoid, that was everything there. Then what we did is we uh, set the debounce, or we corrected that. So now this will, only, this will work only after a set amount of time and things, okay? Now, uh, your challenge now is to go back and have a look at the for loop video, go, then go and have a look at the slow burn lava video. The slow burn lava video, it explains how to reduce the health by a little bit each time. Combine that with the for loop, okay? So pause the video now and have a go. Now, if you have had a go at that, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to do a few things first. What I need to do is I'm going to set two variables here. Uh, the first one is going to be how much I want to damage the player. So I'm going to call this uh, burn damage equals 10, for example. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to do another one. So burn duration. And this one's just going to be equal to three. So three seconds of burn duration and a total of 10 damage per second. I'll, I'll explain why I did this in a second, but you can do this without, but I'm going to explain why it's good practice to do this here. But then what we want to do is we want to do our for loop. And our for loop is going to go here between the two actives, between active false and between active true. So what we're going to do here is we're then going to write a for loop. So we want to say for because that's how we start a for loop. Then we want to name the for loop. So I'm just going to call this one count because that's what the for loop is doing. Then we want to say equals, so is a, uh, my count is a. Uh. And then I am going to start counting at the number one. And then I want to count up to my burn duration here. So I'm going to say burn duration. And then I want to do something. And what I want to do uh, is the humanoid holds the health. So I want to say humanoid dot health with a capital H.
equals humanoid dot health minus burn damage. And then finally, what I need to do is I just need to add a wait for one second. Well, and that should now work. Let's test this first, and then I'll explain this, this little bit here. So play here. And if not, we're about to go on a debugging session. So one, two, three, four. perfect, there we go. Right, now, uh, the reason why I added those extra variables here, now I could have just done this. And you're probably thinking to yourself, well, why didn't you? Well, if I wanted to increase the amount of burn damage or if I wanted to make the burn damage longer or shorter, what I'd have to do then is I'd have to go into my code and I'd have to increase this by hand. So instead of doing burn damage by three seconds, I'll do burn damage by five seconds and, uh, sorry, burn duration by five seconds. And then I'll decrease the burn damage to five like that. That will still work. However, you've got to go through your code. You've got to read everything. You've got to make the chances of you making an error goes up by quite a bit if you're doing it there. I even got mixed up when I was explaining it. So if I wanted to change anything now, all I'd have to do here is just go here and change these numbers. So burn damage is going to be reduced to five and burn duration is going to go up to 10. That's it. And then these numbers will automatically be applied into my code. We're just making it that little bit easier if we want to change anything. So let's try that now. And let's have a go. And as we can see, my health is going down quite quickly. Now, uh, that is it. Uh, next class, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be putting it all together in our project. So I'll be walking you through a quick, uh, the zombie escape game that we're going to be making, and then we'll take it from there. So I shall see you in the next one.